We're RVing again. Oh my goodness. I want to show you some expert Jedi level RV trips because this video isn't just the story of us visiting family. I want to tell you something that might be useful. Make that bed. <laughs> this is gold, what I'm sharing with you here. I'm going to use my editing skills to make this look really graceful. <laughs> hey, did you forget the toilet paper? This is our buggy. They're gonna shoot out to Colorado and see family and see grandchildren. Right, so I wanna show you some expert Jedi level RV trips because this video isn't just the story of us visiting family. I wanna tell you something that might be useful. The first hack that is absolutely amazing are these clear bins and here's why. Number one, I can immediately see what's in them and I know whose clothes are in here. If the bins were opaque or color, um, you can't see in and then you got to look and, and you'll forget, right? Next thing I love about these is the size. It's big enough that I'm getting a load, but it's small enough that I'm not going to trip. It's really hard to make this too heavy. So it's just the right size because remember, we're not full time anymore. We're going in and out of the RV 20 times to load up the RV. And you want them to fit the size of the cabinetry yeah, you're using. They These do. are perfect. They are. And so let me show you um, another place uh, that those bins are really, really helpful. Look at this. Look at these. Look at the snack Snacks. situation, right? So I know which is my salty bin and which is my sweet bin. <laughs> See? So you spend all this money on an RV, but the one thing they don't tell you is that these mattress pads are horrible. So I'm gonna give you two tips here. The first is going to be for those mattress situations where you have to use the pad that comes in the RV. What are you right? doing, John? Putting a new mattress pad in our bed. What a pain these are. But you know what? If you don't have them, it really hurts. So I'm glad we're getting it for this trip. You're right, this mattress pad is a little small though. It's too small. How much was it? Um, like 69. The next big one was 99. That's the one we need. But look at the $30 savings. Look, this is a $30 savings right here. My legs will hang off the side <laughs> and I'll wake up with back problems. <laughs> but you will have saved $30. Phytonomics. There you go. So we have to use this pad because it cuts in half and when you when you close it, it folds, right? Come on, girl, push that thing. Make that bed. Make that bed. Yeah. One more. One more heave ho. There it is. You got it. I'm gonna use my editing skills to make this look really graceful. <laughs> when you can bring a mattress, you should do it. You can't always bring a real regular mattress, but this is a real actual mattress under here it's perfect for her and 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 you should bring them every chance you get right because <laughs> these mattress pads the just won't cut it it's gonna be crazy push it in yep you're so strong well, it's not gonna go this way look at your bed sage what do you think does it fit it doesn't fit should we put it long ways it doesn't fit does it we should put it on long ways we have no choice but to put it long ways <laughs> you like it yeah Push it if, if you can. So what do you think? Good. So we just lost a lot of our storage by doing yeah. that. Yeah, we lost storage, but maybe we can. That's good. Okay, we'll figure out our system. Making RV beds is no fun. That's right. Good thing we're the RV odd couple. <laughs> and good thing our brand is based on not knowing what you're doing. <laughs> Supposedly, we re were really good at what we did when we RV'd for three years. But, but then we forgot it all. We've forgotten. So maybe we start over again. So these are expert level, Jedi level RVing tips. This is gold, what I'm sharing with you here. Okay? The biggest difference between a towable and a motorhome is that you hear everything in a motorhome. And it's very unsettling when you're driving and you hear all your possessions rattling, mm -hmm. you know, times a hundred. So this stuff is gonna help so much, but this alone is no good. Double-sided tape. Now, for those of you that have the bandwidth to do this, you will be so glad if you're in a motorhome that you took the time to do this. So. Let me show you. I, the irony here is that I'm cutting and using a tape measure and I have no business doing that. 
but basically this easy grip liner, whatever color you want, you cut it out to fit. Because even in here, it'll make a lot of noise. Yep. So you dry fit it, and then you take the double-sided tape and just a little bit, gonna go a long way. You will be so glad that you did it when you're driving down the road and you hit a little pothole or a little speed bump. And sometimes you don't even have to hit a bump to hear everything just rattle, you know? Going down I-10. Well, you know if you've been down I-10, right? So you do this. And the nice thing about it is that this is cheap enough that, you know, in a few years, if it gets dirty, you will have zero guilt in getting rid of it. Yeah, clean it out, new put new ones in yep. once a year. And then the other thing you're going to want to do is take this kind of stuff. Yep, you know, pack everything tight so you don't hear any rattling. Yeah, because if, if you were to throw this, it's going to yep, drive, drive you nuts. It's going to drive you nuts. But if you put it on top of that. Or put it inside yep. here and make it Make it so tight. it doesn't go back. You hear that? And you are good. Yep. Thanks, babe. This is the next Jedi level tip. Getting the snacks at the grocery store instead of the gas station. They're a lot cheaper at the grocery store. Do this instead of that, that gas station store, right? That's right. Get your snacks at the grocery store, not the gas station store. They have so much good stuff in the grocery store. And in, at the gas station, there's only junk food. What do you think, babe? We ready? think so do you think we have enough popcorn uh that'll get us probably halfway there that'll get us halfway there we may not have enough room oh there's plenty of room i just don't want to it'll work popcorn. <laughs> honey this is you want some help babe uh, this isn't going too good it's gonna work uh, don't worry don't don't break the bag i'm not honey let me get that no no i'm doing great i'm doing great <laughs> you have popcorn pieces Okay, so the only problem though with getting the groceries at the uh, grocery store is that you get a lot more stuff. So it's like, I don't know where we're going to put these groceries, but I'm really glad we got them. So that's the other nice thing. You'll fruit. never get this at the gas station. Nice. You'll never get the healthy stuff. We got the lots of grapes, lots of oranges, lots of apples. Yep. Healthy foods for the, for the beautiful trip. Yeah, yeah. I love you. Love you too. We're so all organized, close. and then you can see where Sage is staying right up I here. Know, and her books are there. Yep. We're getting it. We're getting it going. I have one more thing to show you. One more expert level tip. Typically, um, you know, I would have shirts, and then I would have pants, and so that would be two hangers per day. So what I've done is I've stacked these in such a way that these are ready outfits. They have pants. They have shirts. And what's more, because we're going to Colorado and it's the spring and Colorado weather is very bipolar. It could be snow and it could be 90. I'll have the shirt and the pants and because you got to do layers in the spring. So it's all in one hanger. So the hanger is a hard worker. It's doing the job of two. So that way I won't take the whole closet and John can, you yeah, know, bring Because I'm not two. doing that with my clothes. I <laughs> pick my pants and I'll pick my shirt. He refuses, but if he would just trust me, his life would be so wonderful if he would just do this hack. <laughs> and the best part about this hack is I have like a week's, a week's worth of clothes. Boom. Oh yeah, okay. And then no decisions to be made. And then Sage gets a third. Yeah. And then I get a third. Exactly. Why you, do I have to be in the corner? You, you get that third. Why do I have that? Because you're the man. And I need room for my shotgun, too. Shotgun's going in there. Yeah, but it's because you're the man. Okay. Go. It's my turn to go in here. Now, look at this. Look doing? at all this wasted space. Look at all these hangers. It's fine. It's the same thickness, you're, whether you put them on the same one hanger or two. You're making the RV really heavy with yeah, all well, these this hangers. Is, this is how my life is happy. This is how my okay. life is Excuse happy. Excuse me. No, but if you would just organize, John. It's organized. No, it's not organized. It's organized perfect for me. It's not organized perfect for you. If you would just let me organize your life, all would be so grand. Yeah, Look at how much space that. that takes. That's that. that's taking so much it's space. It's a lot less than yours. No, because you smushed it. Mine no, smushes. I didn't. Okay, mine smushes better than yours smushes. All right. Well, you do it your way. I'll do it my way. No, okay? we gotta do it my way. <laughs> I've got that discomfort you usually get when you're RVing when you first set out and you haven't been out for a little while. 
It's just this discomfort you feel because it's kind of new again. You haven't done it in a while. You got to, you're not used to the certain things, the way the truck handles, the way that, you know, all of it. Yeah. And so for the next, I'd say an hour or two, I'm just going to be starting to settle in and get comfortable. Um, and then once I get comfortable, then I'll, I'll be a little bit, it'll go a little bit quicker. Right now I'm about five miles an hour under the speed limit. I'm going to stay there until I start getting a little bit more comfortable and then I'll work my way up to the, to the speed limit. Yeah, that's a good uh, tip though. But it's normal to be a little nervous because yeah, the driving is probably the most stressful part of RVing. It's fun having everything you need and having a house on wheels, but it is, it is stressful. So just knowing that it's going to be stressful initially is going to help. So Jedi RV travel tip number 762, okay? <laughs> Pay attention to the cockpit. Um, you'll notice that we have a paper map. You'll notice we have two different GPS's going on at the same time. We're cross-referencing the cell phone GPS with the RV GPS, which those can be hit or miss, usually miss. And then we have plenty of beverages so if we want something hot, if we want something cold, John's got hot coffee and a cold Red Bull. So either way, he's getting the energy he needs. <laughs> and uh, most importantly, you keep the precious cargo, you know, real Excellent, close. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Right now we're sitting in Nashville, we're in really heavy traffic, we made a decision to go through the city um, and deal with that delay and it would have put us about, about 100 miles, added 100 miles to go around it, would have got us through quicker but we decided to go through the city so Nashville and then to Louisville, yeah. St. Louis. Yeah, then St. Louis. Yeah, because even though we're going to hit about 30 minutes of traffic going through the city, we're in a small enough RV that it's okay. If we were in the fifth wheel, at 60 yeah, feet long, it adds, more pressure. it adds a lot more pressure, but this RV is, how long is it again? 25 feet. 25 feet? Piece of cake, and we're not yeah. towing the Jeep, so. It, yeah, so we're small enough that the city traffic, it's just better to take the delay through the city. And it's only 11 o'clock in the morning right now, so. We left early. Yeah, if we had to hit a big city at a certain time, 11 in the morning is a really good time to hit the city, avoiding those rush hours. Get you on camera. We're definitely RVing we like it. We're, we look like a hobo. We're staying at Cracker Barrel. We're living the trailer life. Living the dream. <laughs> so what's the plan, babe? plan is I'm exhausted. <laughs> but it's only three in the afternoon. I know, we've made it around 700 miles. I'm tired, it's only three o'clock. We jumped the time zone and uh, we pulled up at Cracker Barrel and we're gonna go grab some dinner, get a few hours sleep and then I know me, I'll wake up at like eight or nine o'clock tonight and just say, let's go, no traffic, through yeah. St. Louis into Kansas. Kansas City will be about uh, about 10 hours from, from Denver, Colorado, so. We're almost there. You hungry, Sage? You want yeah. some Cracker Barrel? I want some mac and cheese. Mac and cheese? Mac and cheese? Yes. And then we're checking. It's nice to look at the menus from the RV. Yeah. Next time on RV Odd Couple. I can't, I can't believe this. Every decision I've made, I should have made the opposite decision. Every decision I've made has turned out not to work the way I was hoping it would. Yeah. And this is hands down been the toughest trip I've ever had in my life. I know. Hey, did you forget the toilet paper? I know we said Which we'd take it slow and take our time, but now I just want to get there. Yeah. We are out of toilet paper. Is that the one thing you forgot? <laughs> it is. Oh, well, this thing is all over the place. It's not normally this hard, though. It's not funny, babe. I love you. Can you give me some napkins, please? We got paper towels.